In a recent video, I took apart one of these integrated downlights, which is basically, it's a downlight which contains the actual circuit board it, for, for the um, for the light module itself, as opposed to just taking something like a standard GU10 lamp. And someone asked, would it take my <coughs> MR16 circuit board? Now, the MR16 circuit board is something I designed a long time ago, and it basically takes nine Superflux LEDs, um, three red, three green, three blue, and it's designed to fit into standard downlighter type frames like this and it just lets you basically get a, a, a low voltage um, 12 volt downlighter that can colour change. And he asked if this circuit board would fit in this type of housing um, and while it won't clip in it could actually just be tacked in. It could be glued in I guess like with hot melt glue and that would give the option of a colour changing light. Uh, operate at low voltage. It could be quite nice in fact. These circuit boards, I've used them um, on various props as well. Um, if you look at the uh, footage on the internet of Mission 2110 you might see these being used for um, part of the gameplay on some of the games um, there. So yes, you can put this into that if you glue it, but it also got me thinking that uh, in another video still I took apart uh, 110 volt lamp that was supplied to me uh, incorrectly um, and I had to break this out of the glass housing and it made me wonder would this fit in there? And if I measure these the original circuit board in here measures about 44 millimeters. If I measure this circuit board It measures 44 millimetres. If I measure this circuit board out of a, G a plastic GU10 lamp, it measures 44. And if I pop this out of the this lamp here, oh, if I can, there we go, then the circuit board in there also measures 44 millimetres. So, that's what they seem to have standardised on a circuit board uh, based on the GU10 and MR16 lamps. So this 110 volt one, I've changed the capacitor in the back now because that was the main uh, deciding component uh, for its voltage. And I've changed it for a 220 nanofarad 400 volt capacitor. It could have done with being a wee bit of a higher value capacitor for the number of LEDs. But as you can see, that just clips in there absolutely no problem. And if I assemble this together, and I power it up, let's get, uh, let's get this unit here. I'll monitor, monitor uh, what's that power it's taking now as well. So if I shove these leads in here, then actually that's quite bright, that's quite useful light, it's quite nice. Bit of shimmer there as with the, but then bear in mind the iPad tends to pick that up quite easily. But this is only, uh, because I'm using a 220 nanofarad capacitor, and because it's a smallish cluster of LEDs, it's, it's drawing, it's Power consumption is 1.3 watts, which is actually very good. This would be a really nice decorative lamp. And the current through the LEDs is 16 milliamps. Now, if you consider... Yes, I know the power is still on. If you consider that this is using the 50-50 LEDs with three chips per LED, and all the chips are wired in parallel, that means the actual current going through the individual chips is about 5 milliamps. So this is going to last a long, long time. And I really like the fact that it suddenly, um, it becomes very hackable. If you wanted, you could put this in there or you could put this in there. Um, with um, There's not a huge amount of space at the back for the circuitry, but it, it does just open up possibilities for um, hacking and modifying these lights. So yeah, that's, that's quite nice. It's quite appealing that they have actually standardised on some circuit board sizes. I'm going to keep an eye out on some of the other products now and I'm going to measure all the circuit boards as I get them uh, because I think that they have actually standardised in a series of, series of sizes that are then just fitted into uh, various manufacturers' lamps. So yes, that's nice. It's a good find.